welcome to the third and third and final video on Flow Labs uh, for this short workshop that I've been I did um, not too long ago for Go Connect, which was six weeks. Uh, like I said in previous videos, we do plan to do it again in the future because it was you know quite popular and I quite enjoyed it. Um, we just don't know when. I mean, we do try to uh, rotate our workshops around. If you are interested, and obviously by all means get in contact with Go Connect and see if we can uh, work with you. Or maybe you're an educator and you like to do some stuff with the students and we're like, we can help you out. Um, yeah, so I would recommend watching the second video at the very least, just because I do talk about some mechanics that I'm going to be talking about here. Uh, the first video is very much like the Flow Labs tutorial. So again, uh, you can go through that if you want, or you can just watch my video, which kind of explains it a little bit more in a little more detail, explains why things are happening. It's about an hour long, maybe 40 minutes to an hour long. So yeah, you can watch that if you want. Right, so this is a student's game that I'm going to be talking about. And also I'm going to be going into my game Catman, uh, but I'll be doing that later. Now, this game is not complete and there are still a few bugs. And actually when I was trying this out a few minutes ago, there are a few bugs, so I do explain, but it does kind of do what I want it to do. So we'll kind of go through that. So click on play. I load up the game. Now it won't work straight away because again, like I said, it's a little, <laughs> a little bit buggy. Uh, wait, load. So the idea is that you press spacebar. This is your title menu. You press spacebar, and you kind of load in. So. Uh, the, the student wanted some like enemies. They are supposed to follow you around, but they don't. Um, and then you kind of go in through this box here and you kind of appear here, which is fine. And then you kind of go through your level and stuff like that. I haven't done any more on this as in there's, you can't, there is an exit uh, when you slowly go through it, but actually there's two, that's, that's a bit long. I'll, sh I'll show you the, um, when I go into the editing bit, oh my God. Okay, cool. And then go down. Now this is the bit where it kind of messes up a little bit. And I don't know why I have to kind of work it out. Maybe I can try to work it out now, but it won't. But if I kind of go here, I do appear in the same location that I wanted to, but I also appear in a corner, which I don't know why that is. So that's really, really interesting. I'm sure if I do it again, there'll probably be another one. But yeah. So let's go to edit game. Let's see what's happening. As you can see that there are no characters here. So very much like the cat one in the previous video, but you see the lollipop here and that's where all the mechanics are happening. Okay. So we want to keep on between levels. We definitely want that uh, and everything. Solid doesn't really matter, I guess, because it's not being solid, it doesn't really touch. Uh, and then this is the kind of level select. So what happens here is it goes to level two. Yeah. So when you hit it, it goes to level two. It gets the number two and then it sends it to spawn level. It sends it to spawn level, which is this here, right? This is spawn level. Well, oh, that's sorry, that's logic level. But it's, yeah, I mean, it's called spawn level, but it's sending it to logic level, okay? So if you go to the first one, start level, so press spacebar, it's in this one here. So spacebar is pressed down, it gets the number one, sends it to the lollipop, which is the logic, and it is called spawn level, and it goes to level one, yeah? This is throughout everything, yeah? So this goes in, but it's not turned on. Spawn level turns it on, sets it to free, and then this is what happens. Now, this works, this works, but then when I go back to one, this seems to reset for some reason, and I don't know why it's resetting to zero, which doesn't make any sense. So if I kind of go from here and play it, you'll see it. So it's set to zero now. That's obviously going in. That obviously works there because we did spawn level, and that should have done one, which you couldn't see automatically. But there, we can't actually see too well here. There you go. That should be two. We'll see it two. There you go. Two. Then it goes back to zero. Now it resets back to zero, which I don't want. I'll tell you what, this probably works out because that way it kind of turns itself off. And I imagine it would work now. 
Let's see if it works. So start, play. Actually, uh, let's go to a thing here so you kind of you kind of see it from this uh, from this sort of thing. I don't know if this is actually going to work. For us. So yeah, okay, that works. Turns itself off. Sets it to two. Sets turns itself off. Sets it to three. Okay, so I got it to work. So yeah, I needed to do this little loop because. It was, it was leaving itself on, even though this resets, which I don't understand why it resets between levels. It's kind of annoying. I mean, can I have it so that it resets between levels? Yeah, I mean, it's probably not going to be able to, because like I said, it is quite li it is limited in a way. Um, but yeah, so that I've got it to work. So there you go. So, um, oh, sorry, if I go back here. So I go back to start, hit play. So spacebar, I spawn in the corner there, which I'll show you. So very much like the cat one, but I set the, the spawn location to one, which was the first location. Now remember, I'm not actually choosing different, like different players when I'm doing this. I'm doing the same player. So when I do admit, when I spawn my character, I'm just doing that same one. And then I'm hit, and then, you know, when it goes to the next level, that's where I'm spawning it spawn it in this location here again i had to experiment with the x and y so this is two again i haven't done it up here but i'll show you this in, in, in a bit going back spawns it to three and then it's disappeared so it's all good so let's have a look a little bit so this is level one this is level two again the student kind of wanted to do all of this we kind of did that with the um <laughs> with the chest and stuff like that we did level three we couldn't get to it this is how big the he wanted the boss so we did actually do it so that um, if you actually play it, the boss actually has 10 HP, and I believe it's K. Is it K? Spacebar? Oh my god, what is it? One. What is the um, behavior? G. Okay, so it's G. All right, let's have a look. So, uh, the, 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 this enemy is supposed to hurt you, but you can see how the number goes down. This is basically its HP. So once we kind of Im implemented that in, once it goes down to zero, obviously it destroys itself. And it also destroys the little block that was here. See that there's a, there was a little block there, but it's not anymore. And that's a little block here. And again, that's in behavior when it gets door, that kind of kills itself, you know, sends it to door and stuff like that. G, we've we've kind of sent it to G, but basically you would have collision with whatever animation we wanted for the sprite uh, for the attack thing. So this bit here is where it's where it is all at. So let's go to level one. So again, I had to kind of play around with these numbers because again, I couldn't kind of directly know where all this is. I had to kind of guess. So one comes in, equal to one, spawns here. I had to kind of play around with these numbers each time, keep on doing it each time so that it would spawn in this location, which is where um, which is where the student wanted the original character to spawn, wanted to spawn here. But then we needed to spawn here and in this location here. So in order to do that, for this one, we had three. So it goes back to spawn thing here. Go back to level one, three. These are the numbers here, which is corresponds to this area here. Okay, and again, I had to keep on doing it each time, just to kind of test. And I kind of, basically, what I did is I put a player in here, and kind of kept trying this way, kept restarting it each time, playing it each time. Then I deleted this guy. Then went back to uh, sorry, back to two. Oops. And then I put in this player here. And then I played this level a few times and then spawn in it, like trying to each time again with the numbers to, until I got it correct. So that is this, uh, this dungeon thing. So you need to have a logic system like this. OK. So it goes in. And once this is all set up, all I have to do now is just adding these numbers here and these spawn locations. And it's already set up because all this is done, right? 
because I don't have to do it again, which is really useful. This was a test thing because I was testing, so I can actually delete this now. Um, yeah, so this is all pretty set up. So when you're doing games and stuff, it's always good to remember that you're going to be doing it very, very, you know, things are going to look really dead simple. And then once your mechanics and natural functionality is done, then you can worry about, okay, how does it look? Does it look nice and stuff? You, you really kind of want to keep it basic and stuff like that. So the idea was <laughs> that I did these first three spawn things. The first, at the start of the level, then from level one to two, and then level two to one. And the idea was that when we did the workshop again, uh, we do two to three and then three to two. Sadly, um, that workshop, the student couldn't attend. And then obviously then we finished, we actually finished the workshop there. So that was, it was on the last workshop. So we weren't able to complete this, but it's there so that if he's, because he actually does have access to this account and he's, this file. Um, well, this is not an actual file, is it? It's just the actual on the S account. So he's actually able to play with it. And I did tell him on our Discord channel uh, that, you know, he can join. Anyway, so this is the dungeon one. I, I kind of thought that was important to show. So let's show my Catman game. <laughs> which is a very simple game but it's very si silly but it is quite interesting uh some of the stuff that i've done okay i've just logged into the same one again of course i have so let's sign out log in again and go to this one there you go cool right go to my games Catman is the one that we want, and this is the very first video that we did. So the link on the first video will be here, and the link for this video would be to Catman. So let's have a play at Catman and see. There were some sounds, but I turned it off because when I was showing this on the workshop, uh, it was a bit annoying. I the students couldn't hear me, so I'm glad that I turned this off. So anyway, so the very first level, the very first start, you'll see that I'm not touching any, well, <laughs> you can't see it, but just believe it i'm not touching anything and there's an automated guy going back and forth um you can probably guess how that's done if you've seen the second video and basically he's hitting a wall toggling and then he's going back again okay so start the game press k you'll notice there's a little number in the top hand corner here again this was for test purposes but i've left it in because it's quite good to show the process a little bit okay so press k so i start off as a guy yeah there's a door here, can't go anything through the door. And you see my health is free and you see stars. And little pops and I get my stars. If I hit the spike, obviously I go down there. I can increase my health. Uh, there's a star there I can't touch, can't get because it's too high. So I need to go across here. Get a few little spikes here, stuff like that. So a little stars, a few more stars. And as you can well probably imagine, I flipped the switch there. It's probably going to unlock the door. So come back here. Now, I can't do this jump, right? So this is where the cat man comes in. So how do you turn into a cat? Well, of course, you, turn, you touch the crystal. Now, I think in the, oh, what was it? I think it was the second video. <laughs> um, I explained about parroting. Um, so... Basically, this cat has some mechanics in it and some behaviors, which again, I'll show, but it doesn't have the movement. However, I can still move back and forth because it's the parent of the player, like the normal human. So as a cat, you can jump higher. So I've done that. So um, the little trick there that, you know, you can do that. And I go through the door, which is now open, it's closed. And I turn back into a guy because Cats that go through doors turn back into men. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so there's a few stars. We've got 10 stars at the moment, which is pretty good. We can have another little part there. We need to, uh, we can't do this here because obviously we'll die if we go across here. We'll die. Yeah, there you go. So we need to turn into a um, uh, crystal. Um, you notice there that I reset the, the game, but I got 11 stars. There's a way to see how that's like a bug. I need to cheat that. So I've already got 12 stars, but I've already set that. So that needs to be a thing as well. 
but you know, it's still early days. So anyway, turn back into a cat, meow meow. Um, get these stars here. I flick the switch here, uh, but it says no cat. So I go across here, but there's no cat. So obviously, you know, it does. So we need to turn back into a guy. These, um, these numbers here were supposed to link to my health and my stars. I don't think it implemented it, but I was just experimenting. I was saying like, why does the labels not carry on? But a good way to get around that would be to put the label onto uh, something that's not connected to the sprite. So it's probably like in the corner up here, you know, when we go to the edit bit, we'll put a sprite, we'll put something up here so it would link the uh, health and the, the stars. So anyway, so to get past this bit here, because it says no cats, we need to turn back into a human. So how do you turn back into human? Apart from obviously doors, eat mushroom. Okay, so eat a mushroom. And you've got my stars there, 17. And then 18, you've got 19. I think this is the highest thing. There you go. So your high score is 19. Yeah, it's the same number there. And to reset, you just press K. It goes back to the, to the start. Press K again. And there you go. So let's have a look at what this game is doing. Okay. So first of all, let's look at the all this. If I if I um, well, let's look at the cat first, actually. So cat player here. Uh, behavior. Oh, sorry. It's parents. It, it is just the player, and the behavior. It's got the HP and stuff, like I said, but I haven't implemented that really. I don't think I've done it. It's got run and jump, but what I did is I deleted everything out of it and I just kept the jump at a mechanic. So technically, this character, when I turn into a cat, is kind of jumping twice. It's it's getting the force of whatever this is, which is six, and then adding three onto it. Okay, so which is why the cat the cat can jump a little bit higher. So let's have a look at. Uh, the actual behavior of this. Now it gets a little bit complicated because it's got save states, but I will go through that. So this we don't need to worry about because we've gone through all of this. All of this here we don't need to worry about again because we kind of um, played around with it. We don't need to worry. Uh, let's move that all the way up here. There we go. Cool. Right. This is save numbers, which again, I'll kind of go through in a bit, uh, but we want to kind of go what happens to the cat thing uh, when you turn into a cat and not. So this is what happens here, okay? So when I hit this crystal here, down here, this is what it's called. It's called a transform, yeah? That's, that's what I called it. And then obviously the mushroom was called transform back. Right. Remember, this is all the this is all within this player here. Not, not it's not in the cat because the cat only had that jump element. So what happens is I hit transform. Yeah, this triggers. I get the x position from this object and the y position from this object. If you remember the spaceship one, um, it was on the other object, but we we wanted it to get from this object. It then destroys this sprite because that's what we want to happen. And once it destroys it, it spawns the cat player, okay? And it uses the X and Y of your, well, your location when you hit that to spawn it. And again, to go to the mushroom. Once I hit, when I'm a cat and I want to spawn back, I spawn black as a player, yeah? It destroys the, that particular sprite um, because Again, like I said, it's using this, um, it's using this uh, behaviors as it as its parent. It's using the X and Y of the position, yeah. And it's spawning player. Now I could level two. I could put I could sort of put the character here and press play. And when I hit it, it's going to destroy this and then respawn him. But you probably won't see, you, you, he might flicker, but nothing else won't really happen. There you go. Okay, he didn't even flicker. But he did get destroyed. And in fact, we can actually see that by kicking play. Oops, sorry, not hit play. Um, go in here, behaviors. 
hit play here. Uh, so let's move this a little bit down. So this is all. So this is what's going to happen. He's going to transform back, but nothing's really happening because he's already there. So you'll see it disactivate. See how it activates? It activated and it spawned him back as the player, but because he was already player, um, you know, nothing happens. But, you know, I could uh, delete him, put the cat here, for example. And then hit play. Again, it's not going to show, show the, um, actually, let's do it for just way because there's no point doing that way because um, it's, well, <laughs> it's not going to show it because it's all on the previous, on the other character. But yeah, hit that. Then I spawn as a as a human. Now this bit's quite simple. Um, this has just got a simple behavior where if it hits the cat player, it destroys itself. Okay, so as obviously as a cat player here, if I go up here and <coughs> excuse me, and I hit these blocks, it's going to destroy itself. But if I'm player, it's not going to, right? So that was a way to get around it. And again. <laughs> Um, you know, you can play around. Um, this little block here, um, I was kind of showing to the students because they wanted a way for this to be random. So they wanted it to sometimes be destroyed and sometimes not to be destroyed. So a way to get around that is at the start of each, when this game played, it would pick a random number between one and two, which 50%. And if it passed on one, I believe, it wouldn't get destroyed when uh, anything touched it. And if it was two, uh, it would. So yeah, so it was, if it was one, if, if the random number picked one, it would get destroyed. If it was two, it wouldn't get destroyed. So you could walk across it. Um, a little bit unfair, but it was just, it was just an interesting way, you know, another mechanic that they wanted to do. I think the, one of the students wanted to have something similar, have a random element in his game. And he was just like, well, how would I get it so that this would be random each time? And I was like, well, you could do that. Um, that was a 50-50 chance, but I could say like, well, you could pick a rat, you could pick a, a wider range of numbers um, so that, you know, you could be more, you can have more variety. So you can have um, two out of three would be not, wouldn't get destroyed, but then one out of three, it would get destroyed. So you would basically have bad luck. Um, and then you could basically do a whole platform of this. You can make the whole game like that, where some elements would get destroyed and some elements wouldn't. So that where you have replay value and then um, the game would be different each time. So a lot of this stuff is very, very similar, like the door. You know, I'm not going to tell you about that because it's, you know, we kind of already gone through it. The spikes has already gone through, the switches, the... Um, what I will go through, however, is how to do the stars, because the stars are really interesting. Now, we've already done the stars in terms of um, when you get a star, you get it, it gets one, and you set it, you know, it adds it, and then it adds to the value. But what I wanted was a way to save the stars so that it would keep until the ends and not have something um, that's always constantly there. And in order to do that, I needed to do a save number. Okay. So uh, in order to, so what I would happen is you would collide with a star, right? And it would get one and set it to here and it would set it to this save number. Okay. Now, remember, you can only have wait one save number in the game. And it was like what I was saying previously, if you have multiple things that are go between levels or numbers stuff like that and you have multiple save numbers you don't really want to have you don't want to have that you kind of want to keep it to one or if you're very smart you could probably have different filters but i just wanted it for one because i wanted stars so it gets this star here it adds it yeah which i can show you you'll see how it adds it to one there you go and once it adds it to one once this one it's going to save it to this number here okay and then what I also wanted, because I wanted this to be uh, throughout all the different levels, 
always reads this number. Okay, so it's reading this number now. So, so I've saved one. Yeah, so it's going to be one now. And it's going to be reading this number always. As you can see, it's always active. Yeah. It's all, and at the moment it's one because obviously we did, we've done one. So it's going to output it as one. See how it, how it puts it to one? If I get two, oh, I, do it. I can jump. There you go. That puts it to two. Okay. So that was a way I can get it to um, save, right? So I've done that all the way through, right? Uh, and then you're like, okay, well, how about the end? Well, the end was quite simple. What I did is high score here, which is this bit here. What I do is always read the same number. Remember it's saving it. I think it saves it, I believe, in the RAM. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, it's, it's quite useful for scores, uh, current level or other game processes. You kind of want to maybe just do one, but I believe it saves it in the RAM or in the on the cache or something on your browser. OK, so again, you want to kind of keep that. Why is it this key not set? Anyway, so, yeah, so it saves it. If I run it now, it will probably be one or two, whatever it was. OK, it's not because nothing's nothing's done now. Um, once it when you kind of do the entire game, it reads this number and then it outputs the value. OK, and then you press K to go back to the start. Yeah, I'll do a link on this so you can have a look at these all this at the um, mechanics and the behaviors. One thing, though, what I found was quite interesting and I was doing a mistake is. Um, when I was doing the game again, it would it would keep the save from the previous time you played. So I needed a way to reset it. So once you press K, it goes to the next level, but it also gets this number here and saves it as a save number. So of course, um, when you actually do the actual game, the the, the main game here, <laughs> it's because I haven't I haven't reset it. Okay, press K. See the twos up here. This is again I was saying about the test. So this is the two here. So press K. And it resets it. All right. And there you go. So there you go. You've got the whole process there, which uh, I bet you it probably won't work now because I think something went wrong when I messed up the last level. I think I pressed something because it said key not set, even though I didn't really touch anything. But like I said, this game likes to. Flow Labs isn't perfect. I mean, it's pretty good, but it isn't definitely not perfect. Oh my God, yes, I'm there. Okay, so that's fine. Turn back into a human. I've got eight stars. Now, the reason I was there because we put the we put the character there. So is it going to do it? No, it's not. So it should be showing nine, but it's not showing nine there. So let's have a look and see what the reason that is. So why is that not working? Key not set. That's strange. I think if I just delete this and do it again so it will work. Uh, where is it? Uh, save, read, value, and then, yeah, there you go. Press nine, there you go. Then press. So, yeah, it's, it's like I said, it's really, really odd. This is a flip one. Uh, you know, it's just always get five. So it's always walking forwards. And then it flips. You'll see it toggle. There you go. Flips. When it hits the wall, it's going to go back. And that's pretty much it. So this one's quite a short one, but a lot of the mechanics and behaviors we talked in the previous two videos, especially the second one, because that was quite a long one. And we did kind of go through a lot. But I kind of wanted to show a semi- <laughs> completed game i guess my catman game where you can then have a mechanic where you change some things disappear which is not very not too different from like the the you know the keys and stuff that we're showing and the on the dog bone that we did in the first like video um you've got a high score that you can kind of get for the game so you can kind of send you can kind of send this to another your friends 
and say, hey, can you beat 19 or whatever? Obviously, I just showed you a bug in my game. So technically, you can keep on dying and <laughs> keep restart, like resetting the game. So that's obviously a way to do it. Um, you would obviously have to change that. But there are obviously going to always be bugs when you do your game. What I would highly recommend is that, you know, do your best and see what you can do. Um, oh, yeah, it goes behind this because this is a higher um, uh, display order. Oh, no, it isn't actually a display order. What happens, actually, which is really interesting, is when you put something down, it's always going to be on top. So if I press play now, see it goes in front. Whereas if I put this down, because this is not solid, yeah, it's going to go behind it. OK, so keep that in mind. But what you really want to do is if you want this to be in order two, regardless if I put this, the last thing I touch this down, it's always going to be behind it because numbers are always going to be higher in terms of its stacking order. OK, so, yeah, back to what I was really saying, make mistakes, really make mistakes like, you know, it might you might be wanting to pull out your hair, but try small. You know, I would highly recommend you create a platformer. And then once you've done your platform and maybe try to add elements to your platform game and see how you can sort of change that. Uh, and then once you've done that, maybe try to make another game, maybe a little bit, a little bit more to what you're like want to envision when you kind of think about, oh, yeah, I want to create my own game. You know, if like I said, if you want to do your Pokemon type game, do a platformer, then maybe try to do some elements where you kind of spawn in a creature and stuff like that. Once you've done that, um, you know, you could potentially make a little game out of that and then go from there. Um, you might be surprised. You might find that the, some of the tests that you're doing uh, turns into another game that's just as fun. Uh, I was recently just reading about GTA, the first game, um, the top down version that was supposed to be a racing game. And uh, when they did play testers, the play testers were all hitting the police cars and the police cars were it was a bug and they just kept chasing the player. And it wasn't really supposed to happen with the game, but the playtesters loved it so much. And then the developers were like, well, let's implement this in the game and kind of took it in a new direction. So, you know, playtesting for yourself and other your friends, you know, could push the direction of your game into a slightly different way. So with that being said, uh, hopefully you enjoyed all three videos, four if you include in the intro. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you potentially in the next workshop that we might be doing in the future okay have a good evening day or whenever you're watching this bye bye